Hey guys, in this Street Smarts episode, I actually went to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at Clarks Hill Lake uh, and was actually there doing a self-defense workshop for the forest rangers and staff at the facility. So in this episode, we're going to be covering things that are very important for keeping you safe. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Basis. And a lot of times you're walking into situations that you don't know what exactly is going on in that moment. You're having to deduce, okay, what should I be doing with this group of people? What should this scenario that presents itself, what do I do with that? Um, in a lot of cases, you're alone. So it's not like you necessarily have somebody that's standing right next to you. Um, safety in numbers isn't on your side when you're approaching someone. So some other things that are uh, things that you can do um, is maintain when you are attacked. Let's, so let's skip to this, okay? We've already figured out, we've got an exit strategy, we've got some other things. When you are attacked, one of the main things that you've got to be able to do is maintain your balance. This is one of those things that I was saying earlier, it seems like, okay, that's, that's, you know, something I think I would maintain my balance. But one of the key factors for you surviving is not to be on the ground. Once you go down to the ground, it's very hard to get back up, especially if you have more than one opponent that you're facing. If I have somebody, and let's say I get knocked down to the ground, okay? If I get up, there's a couple of ways it's very important to get up. You may have to stand and see me because I'm going to just be using this area. If I start standing up, one of the things that I have to do is I have to make sure that once again, I'm in a situation where I'm not in the middle. If I have two people that are, that are in this situation where they're here and I'm having to try to fight my way up, I've got to turn and face one person or I've got to turn and face the other person, which means I leave the most important and vital part of my body exposed, which is the back of my head and my neck. If I'm having to turn, I can't see what's going on here. I can block all day, I can grab onto his leg and do whatever, but I can't see what's happening here, okay? So a lot of people think if you get knocked down, the first thing you gotta do is uh, try to stand back up. It's actually not that. When you get knocked down, the first thing is to figure out where these people are and start positioning yourself. If you have something behind you, I know that's not gonna hurt me. <laughs> they are gonna hurt me. So if I can get here and I can start working my way up, now I can start going, okay, who's the next person that I have to go after I have to worry about first? All right, so just remember that scenario I was telling you all earlier to make sure that you're able to divide out the people? That's what I'm talking about, being able to do that. The other thing is, if I'm down here on the ground, I'm like, I should just stand on that side down. No, no. If I'm down here on the ground, the worst possible way that I can stand up is coming forward to my knees. Although that seems like something that you would do, right? We all stand up like this, we get off the ground, and I'm doing it very gingerly to make sure I don't hurt my foot. Um, and I stand up like that. But in actuality, one of the worst ways you could do to stand up out of a scenario is that. Because whenever you're doing that, I'm occupying my hands. They're on the ground. The second thing is, is from here, again, I'm exposing vital areas. My back, my neck is exposed. My body is exposed to kicks. So when I stand up, one of the things that we teach people how to do is we actually teach them how to stand. That seems really weird, but we do teach them how to stand. We teach them how to protect themselves here, keeping their hand up. This allows me to block. And then we start teaching them how to back away here. So I'm still in a movement pattern and I'm getting away. Thank you. See, I told you, all you have to do is stand. <laughs> so, as you guys are going um, and you're learning, these are some things that you can just practice at home. Go from here, you can start with putting two hands on the ground, and it's kind of like learning to just take your feet and hopping your feet backwards like this. Once you've got that down, you can actually do it just with one hand and use your other hand as your blocking hand, okay? So that's a pretty easy way to work on standing back up. Now, the last thing uh, that we're talking about, um, if you get taken down to the ground, getting up is your most immediate priority. You don't want to end up in a situation where you're still on the ground. Finally, after you've gotten up off the ground, you need to get out of Dodge. You just got to leave the situation, the scenario. And I keep saying that a lot. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos that you guys probably have seen before of people that are in fight scenarios and someone tries to take their bag or their purse or somebody comes by and pushes their girlfriend and so then they just start fighting. They've also got plenty of other YouTube videos where there's another attacker that's further away and they never see that other person. So they engage with that one person to try to win the fight. 
instead of just walking away and then all of a sudden they get knocked out, they get beaten up because somebody else is coming along. So I can't stress enough that it's not about winning, it's just about surviving. And it's about getting home to your families at the end of the day. The problem that I have with a lot of people, especially with women when I teach self-defense, is, and even with adults, at, uh, when we're doing competitive martial arts, we see this a lot with adults, with kids. There's a difference between training in the gym, going through your motions, your punches, your kicks, you're sparring with your partner, you're working with your partner out there, you're not trying to hurt them. And then we step into a competitive environment, and in that competitive environment, we call it flipping the switch. Which means that this person across from me is trying to do me harm. <laughs> and I'm trying to do them harm. If I don't flip that switch, then I won't have what I need to go out and do the best in a competitive environment. Likewise, when I bring this back to self-defense, what I see is that a lot of women, and men as well, but a lot of women have a problem being able to flip that switch in their head. So at what point do I go, this conflict is escalating? That's the thing that we have to determine. Because is it when someone's actually hitting you or trying to rob you, mug you, whatever? Is it when they pick up a bottle and put it in their hand and they have the bottle and they're about to break it over your head? Is it when they start walking towards you and entering the space? You have to start going, okay, when do I flip this switch? At what point do I go, that's not okay? And one of the things that I always encourage people to do is when you get that feeling inside of you where your adrenaline starts pumping and your heart rate starts going up, that's the point. Because at that point, you've already determined in your mind that you're in imminent danger. Now, here's, the, here's why people don't flip the switch. Well... This is, this is, a lot of women will say this. Well, I, you know, what if I'm overreacting? You know, they're gonna look bad at me, you know, I'm overreacting to the situation. And then likewise, what I've heard from men is, is well, I don't wanna escalate the conflict past what it is. Maybe they're just, you know, drunk or whatever they are and it could be worked out. In both of those scenarios, yes, you could escalate it or you could be out of line but what if you aren't? What if you needed that split second to save your life? What if that split second was the determining factor between you walking away or staying on the ground and them finding you later, right? So when you get that feeling inside of you, here's some things that you can do right away. First off, those of you who are out here that are wearing badges, that's great. You have a symbol of authority. <clears throat> Most people don't know what that symbol of authority is, but it ha it's a badge. Like, they just like, okay, it's a badge. Stop. Stay where you are. Okay. You're using your voice as a command. If you were not using your voice as a command, hey, stop. Don't move anymore. Just stay right there. Stay right there. I'm not commanding anyone. One of the things that they do in the police academy is actually teach you how to use your voice. And one of the things that they do in the military is that as well. And one of the things we do as martial arts instructors is we teach our instructors how to use their voice. Being able to command someone, stop. Don't take another step. You need to stay there. Show me your hands. Having that voice, being authoritative, even if you don't feel like it, fake it till you make it. <laughs> you might be going, oh my God, inside, or oh, this is about to go. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready. Let's go on down. Whatever your reaction is, you don't need to show that reaction, you just need to channel it through your voice. And that's very important. Even if you don't have a badge. I'm working with women all the time. We just, uh, we just shot a, a self-defense situation on a carjacking. You have somebody approaching your vehicle and you're not sure who they are, what their intentions are, do you just let them walk by you? Most of us do because we don't want to be rude. We don't want to upset the apple cart. Hey, stop. You move over there. I'm sorry, you're too close to my vehicle. If you're a mom and you got kids, that's easy because you're like, my kids are in the car, right? Or whatever. You don't even have to have that. You can use your voice. What if you're wrong? So what? You made someone upset, they're going to rant about it later on social media. You won't even know them because they're not your friend on social media, so it doesn't matter. 
Hopefully you really enjoyed this episode. If you did, if you got anything out of this, please like, and most importantly, comment. So many of you guys are watching this, but you're not commenting. Comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you wanna see. And most importantly on our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe to get more important Street Smart episodes to keep you safe on the streets.